Dr. Rona. Yes. You're well known in Canada for practicing integrative medicine. What is that? Well, integrative medicine is basically the best of two worlds. It's the best of conventional medicine uh, combined with uh, certain natural approaches to health. So uh, the role of the integrative practitioner is to basically uh, assess and recommend things that are based on you know the particular need of the patient at the time. So, for example, if uh, someone has had like a broken leg or a broken arm or is in a car accident and so on, uh, you basically treat all of those things medically with conventional medicine. But if somebody has like a chronic health problem, whether it be diabetes, heart disease, cancer, arthritis, or what have you, that's been around for like many years, that's something that's more in the realm of a doctor that specializes in natural healing. So the trick is to know what to use, what kind of medicine to use for which purpose. So basically, is it the same as complementary medicine? Yeah, complementary medicine is, a, is another term that's been used. Uh, for myself, I describe myself as being someone who does complementary and integrative medicine mm -hmm. because I do prescribe drugs as well. Mm -hmm. Which is really ideal for the patient because you have one foot in one world and one in the other. Yeah, basically that's what, that's what I'm doing. And I think there's a growing trend for physicians to incorporate more natural uh, alter alternatives to their uh, regular prescribing habits. But there's also a lot of doctors who refuse to look at that aspect of health. So what, uh, what originally got you interested in integrative medicine and how long ago? Well, it was a long time ago, it was well over 30 years ago uh, when I was in medical school. Uh, at the same time, I was uh, involved in uh, playing tennis tournaments and I used to be ranked in Canada. And I always wanted to improve my uh, performance as a tennis player, so I didn't want to use drugs and I wanted to use some natural alternatives because that was something that was growing at the time. There was more and more interest. There were people like Dr. Abram Hoffer and Dr. Linus Pauling and many others who had explored that field. And I was interested in learning how one could improve their performance athletically with, with the use of uh, vitamins and minerals. So I studied that all on my own while I was in medical school. And so I tried to use some of that information on myself to improve my tennis game. And, you know, one thing led to another and I got more and more interested in uh, different aspects of natural healing. And I started to incorporate that. When I graduated, I started to incorporate that into my, into my everyday practice. And so that's how it grew. But the real question is, did it improve your tennis game? <laughs> I think it improved my tennis game, and I didn't really have any serious injuries until I was a lot older and mm -hmm. more decrepit, of course. But, <laughs> but I still take a lot of natural things to help with, with injuries and uh, improving reflexes and that sort of thing. Okay, that's one reason why you got into it. What about patients and patients' demands and patients' education and people walking into your office? Did they ask for different things rather than just a conventional approach? Right. These days, people are a lot more uh, educated. They educate themselves either by reading books or magazines. But uh, ever since the internet came, became very popular, uh, more and more people are reading things and they're bringing in, you know, copies of articles or different things that they've read or their friends have told them about. And so a lot of it revolves around the use of treatments that are not really mainstream. Uh, there's a growing movement away from drugs and uh, surgery and more towards doing something that you can do to prevent illness mm -hmm. or treat it using natural remedies that don't have as many side effects. So uh, there's a growing interest in that field and usually uh, patients that come and see me, they're, they've gone through the gamut of medical tests and treatments drugs and what have you, and they're not satisfied with the results that they're getting. And so they're looking for something that may work a little bit better, that will be side effect free, and that will make them feel much more in control of their health. The one thing I like about this kind of medicine, natural medicine, is because is, is that you become much more in control of your health. You're, you're in charge, as opposed to somebody just writing you a prescription and you being the effect of that. So you're basically giving the responsibility back to the patient in many exactly. ways? Exactly. There's a lot of, lot of education that goes into this uh, mm -hmm. kind of medicine. You have to educate people on uh, you know, how, to, how to make changes in their diet, uh, supplements that they need to take, exercise. It's not just about quitting smoking and quitting drinking and so mm -hmm. on. Uh, the, you know, like I, often in my, in my office, I you know, get on my computer and I print out all these articles for patients <laughs> so that they have a better understanding of why they're doing what they're doing. So mm -hmm. uh, a lot of what I do is educational. Mm -hmm. So I walk into your office, what's the first thing you're going to do for me? 
Well, I'm going to take a very detailed history. I'm going to find out, uh, you know, why you're coming to see me. What What are the symptoms? Mm -hmm. uh, the commonest, uh, commonest uh, symptom that I see in my practice is fatigue. Mm. Uh, but I also see people for chronic ailments of all kinds, uh, fibromyalgia, arthritis, heart disease, diabetes, you name it. Mm -hmm. uh, so I get a good history and I find out what medications that they've been prescribed, what they're taking. I also want to look in, um, into whether uh, they smoke, whether they drink alcohol, whether they consume coffee, what their blood type is. I often times want to know what their blood type is because I, I correlate that with what their diet should or shouldn't be. Mm -hmm. Also want to find out about past history, whether they've had any surgery. Um, I want to find out about their allergies. I want to find out about their family history. All of that's pretty important. Mm -hmm. And then I usually, after I get all the information that I need, I ask them to fill out some information about their diet. So I want to know what they're eating for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. So a lot of lifestyle. So a lot of lifestyle. I'm looking into their habits. I'm looking into you know what they're eating, what they're not eating, uh, what their addictions might be. Mm -hmm. uh, most people are addicted to several different foods, as you know. Bread, <laughs> <laughs> sugar, Wheat, yeah, milk. <laughs> right. Uh, so. You know, I do that, and then after that, I, I do a physical exam and, uh, you know, look for various signs of nutritional deficiencies. I look for, you know, I check their blood pressure, their height, weight, body fat percentage. So it's a, some of it is uh, the same kind, of, same kind of examination that a regular medical doctor would do. Uh, some of it is to look for certain signs. Like, a, for example, I look on the fingernails, and if I see white spots or ridges, that may be a sign of nutritional deficiencies. Mm -hmm. White spots on the fingernails, often a sign of zinc deficiency. Ridges uh, that go up and down vertically, they may be related to a lack of stomach acid, mm -hmm. and lack of stomach acid then causes mineral deficiencies because many minerals require stomach acid to be properly absorbed. So, Are there certain blood types that, are, um, that have a higher percentage of stomach acid than others? Yes, blood type O, which is the commonest of all the blood types, mm -hmm. they're well known for secreting much more stomach acid than the other blood types. Mm -hmm. So for example, they're the ones that uh, get most uh, of the problems with acid reflux or peptic ulcers or mm -hmm. gastritis. And uh, they're the ones usually who are taking antacids and uh, mm -hmm. having some problems. I'm a blood type O, mm -hmm. and uh, if it wasn't for my greens, I think I'd have stomach acid all the time, too. Right. And I'm in a big intestinal problems. <laughs> yes, we know about that. <laughs> in, you, you say in your book, in over 3,000 nutritional, uh, nutritional evaluations, you've yet to find anyone with a normal um, balance even though they follow excellent diets. Why is that? Well, the main reason for that is that the quality of the food is not the same as it was uh, back about 50 to 100 years ago. We now adulterate our foods to such a degree we put in additives, preservatives, chemicals. We, we, we basically change the food to, to a point where it is less uh, rich in nutrients and uh, loaded with also toxic heavy metals and uh, hormones and pesticides and chemicals. Apparently there's about 40,000 different chemicals. Uh, you know, you may know most of them like DDT and mm -hmm. uh, you know, a BHT and there's a whole bunch of others. But the point is that food quality is not the same as it used to be. Mm -hmm. As a result of that, people don't digest and absorb their nutrients as well. They become vitamin and mineral deficient. It's, it's very common for me to see uh, deficiencies in B12, folic acid, vitamin D, vitamin A. Just this morning, I, I saw a, a young child, and he was about eight years old, and I did a blood test on him a few weeks ago, and the blood test showed vitamin A deficiency, vitamin D deficiency, iron deficiency, mm -hmm. protein deficiency. I mean, this is... Scary stuff. This is somebody that's eating the standard Canadian diet. Right. Uh, who we are told by dietitians mm -hmm. uh, that... Oh, we don't have to take any supplements at all because you get all your vitamins and minerals from food alone. And right. this is completely false. Mm -hmm. Because from what I see in my practice, just about everybody has at least one or more nutrient deficiencies. Mm -hmm. So I can go on and on about this because, you know, I, this, is, this is what I do every day. You know, basically I assess people for, um, you know, nutrient deficiencies. And I find just about everybody has, has one or two. So would you say that most people are nutritionally ill instead of medically ill? I would say that, yes, and uh, in, in many cases, these deficiencies are connected to chronic illnesses. Mm -hmm. So, for example, a lack of copper will cause your joints to be inflamed. Mm -hmm. A lack of vitamin C will cause your gums to be inflamed. I see many cases of scurvy, low-grade scurvy. Unbelievable. In, in, in urban centers like Toronto and all, all around the world, really. Uh, 
people just don't realize how much of these nutrients that they need and how much the chemicals and toxins mm -hmm. in our food mm -hmm. deplete these nutrients. And if you smoke, for example, uh, each cigarette is, destroys you know, 25 milligrams of vitamin C or more. Mm -hmm. um, if you drink a lot of alcohol, you're going to lose all your B vitamins. So even the tobacco that's in, the, the chemicals that are in tobacco today are, is not the same as what our grandparents smoked? No. Mm -hmm. There's hundreds, if not thousands, of different chemicals in different cigarette products. So what kind of testing do you do, for example, to find these nutri nutrient uh, deficiencies? It's a good question. I use a lot of blood and urine testing. Mm -hmm. I also uh, take a sample of hair. From hair, you can tell about you know, the levels of at least 38 different minerals. Mm -hmm. um, now, nowadays, forensic testing is using hair to determine the levels of various drugs like cocaine and... Uh, um, marijuana and many other uh, drugs. Mm -hmm. um, we also use something called live cell microscopy. Where and what is that? Well, we take a, a sample of blood and we put it under the microscope. And the difference between that kind of microscopic examination of the blood um, and the standard one is that here we're looking at cells that are alive and they're swimming around on the field so you could see them see how your red cells are in, in actual action. Mm -hmm. Whereas the ones that are typically used by conventional medicine, they basically kill all the cells and they put them between a slide and then they look at them. So nothing is happening there. All they're doing is counting you know, red and white cells. And mm -hmm. here we can see, oftentimes, we can see the white cells attacking bacteria. And it's been thought that the blood is sterile, but in actual fact, we see a lot of people that have little bacteria, parasites, fungi, uh, mycoplasma, many different organisms that could be possibly contributing to ill health, including arthritis and uh, chronic fatigue and you name it. And when you do stool testing, is it in a regular lab or do you send it to a specialized lab? I used to send it to specialized labs and then I discovered that in many cases you can get pretty much the same kind of information from live cell testing at a fraction of the cost. Mm -hmm. The stool tests that were sent to the states, they're very valuable and they can give you uh, some very good information, but unfortunately, the cost is almost prohibitive. There, Some of these uh, uh, tests are costing like 600 to to $1,000, so I, mm -hmm. I sort of shifted more towards live cell testing because I was getting the same kind of information. Mm -hmm. So this is the first time that you have endorsed a vitamin product, a nutritional supplement product. Why TriStar Naturals? Well, the main reason is quality. Um, I have seen a lot of different supplement companies over the years, and quite a few of them are um, basically cutting quarters. They're using fillers, additives, all kinds of different, um, you know, things that they put into tablets. And uh, I was very interested because I saw a lot of patients over the years who failed to absorb the nutrients. And many times they take a pill and it would be time released directly into the toilet bowl. Wow. So it would come out whole. They uh -huh. take, a, they take a, a tablet of calcium or something, mm -hmm. <clears throat> and you'd be able to find them in the toilet bowl. So, now, is uh, this more in the senior set or actually the general it's, population? Actually, it's starting to happen with, with the general population. Uh, I remember once, you know, many years ago, uh, my, my office used to be next to a chiropractor's office, and he used to take x-rays of some of the patients that I would send him. And uh, one day he showed me an x-ray, and there were all these little dots in the colon. <laughs> and he said, uh, Dr. Ronald, do you know what that is? Mm -hmm. And I said, I haven't got the faintest idea. Does this patient have cancer? <laughs> and, and he says, no, those are those calcium tablets you've been prescribing for them. Unbelievable. They are not being absorbed. So we, we <sighs> were able to see tablets all the way down the GI tract, all the way to the anus, completely undigested, time release into the toilet bowl. That's incredible. So. Having seen that and having seen a lot of patients over the years and doing a lot of lab testing, I found out that many people, these tablets are not being absorbed. Mm -hmm. So I was looking around for years and years to find somebody that would do or make or have available supplements in liquid form. Mm -hmm. So like, for example, you know, minerals. Minerals are far better absorbed and digested uh, in a liquid form than they are in tablet form. Mm -hmm. And there aren't very many companies that do that. Uh, the ones that do make pretty much inferior products. And so I was looking around for a company that was able to do that. And lo and behold, TriStar Naturals, you know, they're able to do that. Mm -hmm. And, you know, there are certain supplements that I want to have made 
especially for patients. And so they're able to do that. Mm -hmm. And I, I think it's going to make a huge difference in terms of absorptions because you're not what you eat, you are what you absorb. Very interesting. You know? Is it true that when a particular organ is stressed, it can become pathological? Yeah, that often happens. Uh, you, as soon as an organ is stressed, if it's stressed excessively, it becomes inflamed and then it starts to basically devour itself. A typical example of that is the pancreas. Uh, you know, many people overload their pancreas with eating the wrong kind of foods or eating foods that are excessively high in protein and fat. Mm -hmm. And as a result of that, the pancreas says, I give up, you know, and it just shuts right down. Next thing you know, you've got a problem with somebody with irritable bowel syndrome, Crohn's disease, colitis, constipation, diverticulitis, you name it. They've got all these diseases all of a sudden because their digestive juices are not being secreted at an adequate level. So what is your approach to healing that? Well, we change the diet for one thing. We find mm -hmm. out what, what kind of diet the individual needs, mm -hmm. and then we remove the foods that could be causing the problems, and mm -hmm. we add foods in that could, could be helping. Uh, often, I will add uh, a greens product. That's why we have a liquid green supplement that we use mm -hmm. an awful lot to alkalize the system, because mm -hmm. many people are just getting too many acid-forming foods. Mm -hmm. uh, then we may recommend, depending on lifestyle testing and other testing, uh, that just have enzymes. Some people may need more hydrochloric acid, other people may need more pancreatic enzymes. Some people may need more acid acidifying factors, so mm -hmm. they may need betaine and pepsin. Some people just need more vitamin C to help them absorb their minerals. So mm -hmm. everyone's a little bit different, so it all depends on the individual. The other thing I noticed about TriStar Naturals is they use glass bottles, dark glass bottles. Yes. Why is that? Well, over the years, there's been a, a lot of new information about um, what are called xenoestrogens. Mm -hmm. These are things like bisphenol A, and there's a whole list of them. I can't even pronounce the names of some of these things. Mm -hmm. But they all are chemicals that are found in plastic bottles. And after a vitamin supplement or anything is sitting in one of these plastic bottles, mm -hmm. uh, little by little, they, it extracts into the, into the liquid uh, some of these uh, xenoestrogens. And the danger of those is that they can then uh, increase the risk for things like breast cancer and prostate cancer um, as well as other cancers. So um, these things are not found in glass bottles and mm -hmm. as a result I think if we use glass bottles it's far safer. Mm. These liquid vitamins remind me of Geritol, remember? Yeah, I know. <laughs> Increase your energy. And, you know, I, I work in a senior community, and I do hear many of them say, I just can't, I can't digest these vitamins. You know, they regurgitate them. So yes. this is exciting. Yes, it is. I have many patients who, uh, you know, have tried vitamins in the past, and they say, well, mm -hmm. it, it, this didn't do anything for me. Uh, or mm -hmm. I, I, every time I take one of these pills, I, I burp up fish, a fishy odor <laughs> or something. You know, like the kind of stories that I hear, I... You know, people get all kinds of reactions to of these course. things, mm -hmm. and w when you when you switch them over to things that are in liquid form, they're far better off. Mm -hmm. What about the taste? I know some liquids are very um, they're not, they don't taste good. Well, it's it, many things that are good for you don't taste so good. But mm -hmm. uh, the nice thing is that you can use uh, additives like stevia and xylitol and probably fruit extracts, things like blueberry or raspberry. Mm -hmm or apple mm -hmm. uh, and, and peppermint, and you can make it taste nice, you mm -hmm. know? And um, I take these things myself now, being uh, close to senior age. That's right. I, I'm taking them myself, and, and I think they're fantastic. For example, the fish oils, uh, they have a kind of a lemon flavor to them. You never know you're taking fish oils. I hate fish. Mm -hmm. I, I will not eat fish, but I like the fish oils. Mm -hmm. uh, so you take great. the liquid? Yeah. OK, liquid and then the capsules are enteric coated. Why is that? They're enteric coated because uh, that way they move further down into the GI tract and they don't break down and give you a fishy odor or a back, uh, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. back draft, you mm -hmm. know, a fishy odor, which really turns a lot of people off. Uh, a lot of people don't like liquids, you know, the younger people especially don't like liquids because, uh, you know, they want something convenient to carry around with them and they don't mind taking capsules. Thank you very much. My pleasure.